Moo, and good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Pink Tron. I am Brent Robinson, and I am joined today by Steph Chen. Steph, what are you drinking? Uh, I'm drinking some water uh, with some uh, lime uh, lemon flavored syrup in it to give it a little bit of a tan. Some things, but nice, nice. Also joined by John Keenan. John, what are you drinking? I'm drinking certified mushroom free kombucha. Well, maybe there's mushrooms in it, <laughs> but it's peach flavored. It's rather nice. If it's peach flavored mushrooms, that is no. We're just gonna say no. <laughs> no. All right. We also have with us Craig Martin. Craig, what are you drinking? I am drinking nothing. Nothing. Even oh. more boring. That is a Pinktron fail. Like we can we can go all the no elk, all the rest, but nothing is like didn't didn't bring their homework. <laughs> we also have Sean Fogenberg. Sean, what are you drinking? Uh I I also have water with syrup in it, probably, but uh it's uh <laughs> and also it's, a, <laughs> it's a uh spiked a blood orange spiked seltzer. Oh. Nice, nice. I have lime bubbly because that's what was in the fridge of the office. <laughs> Buble. Buble, yeah, exactly. The Michael Buble style drink. So, um, yeah, and speaking of uh, things that'll make <laughs> you richer, of Michael Buble. Th things that'll make you richer, like seeing like Michael Buble, this week's HSRL is on Rich Mund. Great, great. Yeah. Two laps of Richmond UCI World. Uh, John, I think you've raced, right? I did race it, yeah. It was uh, two laps of UCI, and uh, by the second time we were climbing up Libby in 23rd, it was just a just a mishmash free-for-all of A's and B's and C's, and, like, you couldn't tell who was who. And it seemed... I thought I used to be able to see the B's and the A's, the dots coming up behind you on the mini map or on your companion. And I couldn't see it this time. Like people would just uh, go blowing by me and it'd be like, they were not on the map. Are you talking about like on the contour profile or on like the road part? Uh, well, on the little, on the, um, Where on the like little, the roads as opposed to yeah, like the yeah. contour profile yeah yeah okay. right right and then on the companion app usually you could at least see people like different yeah. dots moving along behind you you had no idea what color they were but yeah so on the companion app you used to be able to see the color or you should be able to see the you're color right you're right you can see the yeah. color on the companion yeah 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 so but i didn't see them at all this time well, that's funny because they, they, they were definitely those were definitely there the last time or when I did HSRL last. Well, I guess I didn't do last week, so it was two weeks ago. Okay. Um, yeah, but I, I did just get an update today. So okay. Well, but that it sh that should only be if this if this race was misconfigured so that other category no because other categories were visible because you saw them. No, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. However, I do have a bit of a trick that uh, I picked up over the years. If you fan view someone who's in another category, then the other during the race, then the other categories will show up on your rider list. All oh, right. Oh. Even if you go oh. back to yourself. Yes. Huh. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so, can you do it in the pens and then sort of get all the different groups on your rider list? Um, I've never sure. I don't think so. I think you have to do it after the start, but I'm not okay. sure. Yeah, I'll give it a I shot. I usually join. I usually join the pen too late to test that out anyway. Ten seconds before race start. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to see, I can't see anything in the support forums about that because I I'm with you, John. I you used to be able to see those dots, so yeah. yeah. So you no, you should be able to see those dots. Um, it might just be that the groups came up fast enough that you didn't notice them. 
Just that could be too, and my yeah. oxygen deprived state. Um, yeah, yeah, because they, they definitely had just before. There was a big group just before Libby was the first climb, and mm -hmm. I tried to hang on to that. But yeah, well, and especially depending on your zoom level, right? That yeah, can definitely yeah. be a factor. Mm -hmm. Like there is a, I, I don't know, I don't even, I know there's a way to change it. I don't know what it's set to. I, wherever it is, I've just left it there. But you know, if you're obviously too zoomed in, they may come right through that window before you even see right. them. Yeah. So, hmm. otherwise, like what uh, like you were racing C's, it was a good group of C's, 20 finishers on Zone yeah, Power. 30 on screen, 20 finishers. Um, so how did, like... It I guess held together just... for the first, you know, you do the two sprints, I think a handful of people got dropped, and then the climbs really stretched things out into little groups of four or five. And then it kind of stayed that way, like... I, I didn't see much change, at least in, in my group of four or five. And then um, by the time we started approaching the second climb on Libby, some Bs started going by, a couple A's came by, I think in one of, uh, somewhere in one of the climbs, I was uh, just seeing people blow by me like I was standing still. But um, yeah, we had, we're, we're, had a couple of opportunities to actually catch the draft after we got through the the steep bits, but it didn't end up helping me, I don't think, because my group of four or five was able to hang on to whatever group was going through for about the same amount of time. And after they broke us off, we were still together. So that's fair. Yeah. What uh, I guess we should just say, so for the course, for those who are uninitiated, the, the Richmond UCI course starts with about eight kilometers or so of flat stuff where you're doing the, the flats around the top and in that so you'll get it, it, it there's both sprints the monument ab sprint and the the real short one right is that the one or is it the longer yeah. one the other direction uh so the monument ab is uh you do the hairpin yeah yeah but the other one the broad street uh, broad the street, street is actually i think yeah. longer than monument ab in this direction yeah, yeah. the other direction is the short yeah. short guy okay yeah yeah so, so it's the longer. Yeah, I've I've blown that before. I think it's going to be the short one, and then it's the long one. I'm like halfway through, like whoops. <laughs> um, yeah. So you'll do both of those two sprints. Then you do the descent into the valley, and then Libby Hill climb back down, Twenty Third Street climb back down, a little bit in the oh, flat, gosh. and then the Governor oh, Street gosh. untimed climb back up yeah. the flats and do it all again. And then that ending was yeah. After that Governor Street climb, like there's just nothing left and it's all slightly uphill to the finish. That was just a lot of like looking at the person on how far behind me and were they going to be able to catch me? Yeah. The governor street climb finishes tough. Like I, I've done it. I don't know how many times and it is always, yeah. um, you know, how, how do you try to drop the guy before you get to the top of the climb? Do you just hang with them mm -hmm. and then try and like beat him that little sprint from the corner? Like it's, and it's it's always it's feels good. further from that corner to the finish line than it really Yeah, is. I was about to say that there's still a long way around when you cross the top and you go left left. It's 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 quite a couple of meters still to the finish. So yeah. 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 Uh, and for the finish, you I mean, maybe this isn't everybody, but personally I'm always totally cooked by the time. You hit yeah. that that climb, mm -hmm. especially in HSRL, where you know it's time segments. So you've just you've just totally buried yourself on the the the, the, the twins, and then you gotta and then you get the triplet. Yeah. yeah. And you've already done it all one other time. Yeah, yeah. it's your seventh and eighth segments, and then yep, yep, yeah. I think that was a consensus that it was it was a great race. It was just one lap too many. <laughs> I, I like this one as a two lap HSRL. I think it's good um, it is I think for HWR two laps is a lot uh, yeah you know for it for the scratch races but mm -hmm. you know well so did it how, how much did it calm down between segments um, I mean the first two sprints come pretty quickly but they were not, I mean, there was nothing that really happened until the first climb. So we were all, I mean, I think that there were a few people off the back, but 
not terribly many until that first uh, Libby Hill. And then it just, you know, it stretches out and then that second hill stretches it out a little further and then it's really broken up, at least in the C's. I don't know how many, how many A's finished. Seven. Oh. But I seven. would just say, like, I'm looking at the C results and the first 11 or even 13 point, like the most 13 most points, um, 11 of them are showing red in their normalized power bar, which means that they were going like... Yeah really really hard and then really really off <laughs> yeah. so, you know you know that means probably it was pretty chill in between yeah i was with uh scott and the mammals the herd writer and he was definitely chill in between and then his sprint power is just pretty big yeah but i mean he averaged 2.4 for the hour so it right. wasn't wasn't especially yeah Yep. Not necessarily on the whole time. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I don't... And, I, it's, I, the, and it's good preparation for next week's race. <laughs> what's uh, what's next uh, week? McElian. Oh. To do, to, do <laughs> lap, uh, two laps of McElian, so it's oh. going to be uh, yeah. yeah, real toughy. Fun. Yep. And also almost 50. And all, yeah. And also I checked uh, one of the uh hurt another hurt guy who records his races uh last week's uh, just checked his recording from last week's uh, HSRL and uh it does show the the category colors on the minimap last mm -hmm. week so Listen, it wouldn't have been the first time that Zwift ever did an update and something that you didn't even know yeah. would change changed. So let's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who knows. Um in terms of like the other strategy or tags, I mean the, like definitely the sprint's tail gun. The climbs like Libby, I'd say just get into the front. Like unless you're you're really, really gonna like dust guys on Libby, I'd say just be at the like be in the front group ish, like, you know, third, fourth, fifth wheel when you get to the first hairpin and then go and you're going to be whatever you're going to be. You can't really tail from that point on. It's too steep and slow. Mm -hmm. So you're, you know, you can, yeah. you can try a little bit at the very start where it's not very steep to like push in, but I don't think it's going to make much difference. It's really about how fast you do that last steep hairpinny bit. It um, is. And then 23rd, you can, you can, maybe slingshot through the group if you can get the timing right from the top i think is the trick i would yeah i find mean find somebody to go down the hill with yeah, that's my strategy yes. yeah. what, that kind of assumes that there will be a group going yeah third wow mm. i yeah. think you just need somebody yeah i because the group mm. is going to fracture some over libby so unless the front guys know enough to let up and create a little group before it goes downhill before 23rd, it's going to be fractured going across that top. Yeah. And it's super tricky to like watch where they're behind you, watch in front, judge how much it's all going to gather up before you get there and then like get the timing down the descent and then smash it up through them up into the thing. Like it's really, really a trick if you can nail it, but mm -hmm. that's, that well, I even idea. say that that's not what you want. I'm not sure that's even what you want to do. I think you want to catch the group on the downhill or just, or on the flat. Have yeah. To, I would, yeah. You want to have the draft right there. Yeah, yeah. But you want, you want to like, it doesn't matter. Draft doesn't matter as much on the actual climb as it does getting your entrance speed. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You, you, I think you'd want to be on the very back, right. When you hit the bottom and then slingshot through them on the flat, and have your yeah. be right into the it's going faster than everybody when you hit the KOM line, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it's just a thirty second sprint. Yep. Woo. Yep. And then after that, I don't know. You put your head on your handlebars. You you let the bike carry you down the hill. Choices. <laughs> and you try to breathe as deeply as you can before you get to Governor Street, and hope you got enough to hang with whoever's closest to you. Pretty much. 
you do have over a K to, you know, recover. Uh, it's over yeah. quick with that downhill, though. I yeah. was going to say, like, it's 90 seconds, two minutes, and it, it doesn't yeah. take long. Fun. And that's where I would generally never attack anyone on the governor's street. Um, Maybe for the finish? Nope. No. Oh, I, I will go. I, I might answer. I might go with an attack, but I, I would never attack anyone there. I would attack on the 500 meters of, of false flat as opposed to on the steep. Like at the end? Yeah, at the end, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it depends if I think the guy's a better sprinter than me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so anybody that's a better sprinter than me is probably a better climber than me, too. <laughs> wow, well, that's probably true for me, too, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> but I would hope to maybe potentially catch them yeah. a bit off guard or something, especially when you make the turn. So, like, the Governor Street climb, like, it starts, like, like up at 3 4%, then it hangs a right. And that portion from when it hangs the right before it hangs the left to go back up to the end. Sometimes I've tried to at least, at least maybe wear someone out or do something there instead of just hang on a wheel and lose a sprint. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there any argument for um, for going arrow, full arrow rather than Tron? Definitely. I mean, both two sprint segments. Two sprints and the um, and twenty third. Twenty third is it's steep, but you've like it. It is a lot about your entrance speed. Unless, well, assuming that you can actually hold it as a sprint. Um, well, as, as long as you can sprint for however long it's going to take you to get up there, thirty or thirty five seconds, or whatever. Um, if you can hold, you know, kind of your double FTP or better for that long, then yeah, it, it, it's, it's about speed. Well, and you're going to be doing your entrance speed is usually in the 60 KPH range, mid fifties. Oh, yeah. Easily. Okay. Yeah. You do scrub some speed in that flat in general. Like it's hard to maintain that speed and go hard, but um, yeah. So, you know, you're doing about a quarter of the climb probably over 40 KPH. Yep. There were plenty of discs in the pen. I'm I'm just saying. Uh, I have you know we've all we've all done this route a bunch of times. Um, if you don't feel like you're going to be able to hold 500 plus watts uh, because it's the fourth and then eighth uh, segments, like I I've seen lots of people who you know would normally be able to do a 28 second climb up this uh do 45 because it's because you're just done a whole bunch of work yeah 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 i mean there's there's arguments for both i think pick whichever one you sort of feel comfortable with. i mean i just know like those sprint yeah. segments too like you can you can easily move up one or two places on that like i know this the arrow to the, just the two, doesn't just make the that much difference yeah. exactly. so uh, just... so the uh this this was just something that that came to mind uh, in in HSRL in particular. Uh, this is less so in a lot of races where you've got FTS because you've got a bigger group and the group is actually moving. But a lot of times in HSRL, especially now, like a couple weeks ago in the um, Coast Crusher, was, uh, those sprints there was a fight backwards. Uh, yeah. off of the group like we were hitting the sprints at 20 25 kph uh at which point i don't actually and so those ones were longer so this may not be uh the yeah. case for those but on if you end up in a race where there is a fight backwards to be off the back of the group it turns out that I would actually say the acceleration of your bike matters more than the top speed of your bike. Uh, in which case, a lighter aero bike, a Tron, 
uh, might actually gain you time relative to a full arrow. I don't know if that's true, but I, I can see an argument for it. I'd have to see the curve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I understand what you're saying. You're not wrong on the physics. But yeah. I, I don't know where those lines intersect. I mean, like realistically, what do you think? Like, let's say your the group is doing like how, how fast do you think your group was going on the flats, John? Like maybe forty, forty kph. Yeah, probably. I mean, no, probably not even that. Like it, it wasn't as. No. I mean, that's kind of a stre uh, what I would call a strenuous TTT speed for me. Okay, so more even like thirty six. Thirty six. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. So like, at thirty six. At like what were you guys doing? Like maybe a hundred and uh, um, maybe... sixty watts. Okay, um, I was gonna say hundred and eighty. So like the difference is like yeah. on those flats, maybe you're on, on a Tron, you'd have to do one hundred and sixty three watts, and on the arrow, you do one hundred and sixty. Like that's really the difference here on yeah. anything other than the sprint timing. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I just I, I do think that it kind of depends on what those group dynamics are, whether you are one of the stronger sprinters who's trying to fight for the back and whether there are others who are doing the same. Yeah. And how big the group is. Like by the second lap, we only had five to play with. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You you can't you're probably not gonna screw it up too bad either way if you're either on full arrow or Tron and just, you know, if you think you're gonna be able to sneak a couple extra sprint points, that's probably the tipping point on to go at full arrow. Otherwise, yeah. if you're probably think you're gonna be mid-pack on those and maybe close to the front on the climbs and close to the front of the whole race, maybe there's a Tron in there instead. Yeah. But I think it's very much that Tron or more arrow, or if you don't have Tron, the most error, the most error arrow thing you have. It's yeah. this is this is flat for almost all of it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. There's no there's no case for a climb or anything like that. No. Good. All right. Well, hopefully everybody gets out there and and has a smash at it. Um, this that is one of the best. Like it is a really good course, Richmond. I know that flat bit can maybe be a bit boring. I, like I, I'd actually think it could be. I know this is like to real life, but if it was, if I was designing it, I'd probably design about a kilometer shorter, I think. Um, Cause it's a bit yeah. long, but, but other than that, it's a really good course. And make it a nice downhill ending. Yeah. <laughs> at, at, at least at the, uh, the hills, uh, at the end, because uh, that fun flat, flat, flat course in terms for ladder racing war is just the most boring thing ever. Well, I mean, yes and no. I, I find on ladder racing, it sometimes get really gets really interesting because people start throwing attacks at random places. Yeah, that's true. But in our last race, there, there's a bit of a drag, 2%. And in our last race, we were evenly matched, so nobody could break away from each other. So, yeah. Yep. But yeah, I've seen things on there as well with ghost play. Play if it's in a, if it's selected as a as a power up. So, yep. Good, good. All right, that will bring us to herd beginner racing. I'm looking at sand and sequoias this week. Yep. Uh, it looks like full up for A's and B's. There's the subcategory, and then uh, two thirds of a lap for C's, which, if I see from the post, finish about a kilometer after the top of Titans Grove. Right, so, so you're do the whole desert first, and then the climb up Titans Grove. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So courses, deserts. To uh, up until LAX, Colu Settle Springs, entering uh, Titans Grove first bit with the roll ratings. Then you have the. Is it the forward one? Yes. yes. E. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
So that's the, the longer but less steep uh, section. And then you have a couple of rollers after that, which I don't think the seas will have. I think the, it finishes at the, at the downhill and then you have the finish at the foyer of that sprint for the for the two highest categories. It's a nice uh, thing. It's one, I don't know if it's the hardest course, but I think it's the longest climb probably for that uh, for uh, H, H, uh, HBR races, I think. Yeah, that, that but, checks yeah. out. Yeah, for C's, it's probably coming down to Titans Grove anyway, since they finish uh, K off right in on the, after the downhill after that uh, Titans Grove. And probably for the A's and B's, it might not be the decisive one, but it will, it can drop people probably and the subsequent rollers after that, because you have a couple of kickers right. Uh, after after Titans Grove on those rollers that if you don't have the the tempo or the pacing right you can easily get get distance uh, by it or or get back to the group uh, if you have it. Even the um, uh, even the cold to saddle springs and those rollers there uh, yeah, are, are a place right. that you really need to um, be on top of it because uh, if you are not attentive there. Uh, it is really easy to accidentally lose the draft, and then, and then there's another, you know, there's the downhill of the roller, and you're off the back, and it's really hard to catch back up. It will probably for A's and B's come down to a sprint. I don't know if it's advisable if you're, you know, you're maybe a good climber or not a good sprinter to try to break people or to break away from people, but it's a long way still from the top of the of the highest rollers is about still 5k-ish. And that desert traction is still a long way when you go out at its growth. So I mean I think if if you really are more of a climber, uh just putting the pace on on the on the climbs. Uh, in hopes yeah. that you drop some people is the, yeah. the approach. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's good. It's yeah for beginners. Just if, like if you've never done any bike racing, you're listening to this to get ready for your first ever Swift race or something. The way bike racing works is when the road goes up, it gets slower, so it's harder to draft behind people. So inevitably, what will happen is the stronger racers, particularly if they're stronger climbers, will try and push the pace and drop people on the climbs. So when you're racing this, when you get into the uphill bit, so, so what we're talking about is there's a portion of the course that'll come up, which when you come through a town where it climbs up to the start of Titans Grove, you will see the stronger racers probably pedal a little harder there. You got to pedal harder and try and stick with them. Then it's going to go turn right and go off into the forest. It does some more rolly stuff. And then there's a bit of a descent. And then you'll see the start of the KOM line. It starts pretty gradual, but it will keep ramping up to about, I think the finish is around like 4%. And yeah. certainly... When you get to like those last few switchbacks, you'll you'll see the stronger riders or more experienced riders potentially. Either way, press the pace, press the pace, and so you're going to wonder why like it's not the end of the race and somebody's like pedaling like I don't know in a D. I don't know what an attack would go at. Probably like four, five, maybe yeah. at the max. Um, you know, you're going to wonder why are they you know for five six kilometers from the end of this race? Why are these guys pedaling so hard? And the answer is that if they can shake the weaker riders up there and only go through there, that group of four or five will probably be able to pace away and keep sort of the rest of them off and potentially even, I mean, um, solo it away. But generally speaking, what they're trying to do is like sort the group out into like, all right, just the people who can pedal this hard at this steep level will make the final group for the sprint. And so anyone who can't maybe keep up with us here, they probably won't catch us by the end if they can beat us just in a sprint. So that is the strategy you're going to experience. So yeah. be be ready when those climbs come. Yeah. And watch uh, indeed watch uh, watch the numbers on on your right side. See if you see the the watch per kilo is going up uh, on those sections. Uh, it's time to 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 react. 
I think this was one of my first races when I started racing and it was the ending, the, the E category ending just after the top of the um, KOM, maybe, I don't think it was a kilometer, it was maybe three, 400 meters, but I wasn't paying that much attention. I assumed the ending was going to be the top of the climb and I was indeed first over the top of the climb and then three people just blew by me on the downhill and uh, <laughs> realized <laughs> Yeah, which which is another good racing tip, which is know the course. <laughs> watch watch yes. the ending. Yes, All right. it's happened. Uh, everybody, I think anyone who's ever done a custom race on Zwift has a hundred percent, or even some some different routes like that door, yeah. dopey ending on uh, Mercury Islands in Umezi, where there's like the weird banner, but it's never the end it's of the not route. the right banner. Yeah, but, you know yeah. that one has caught everyone. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I remember uh, a custom finish also in ZRL because we first did uh, Macquarie 40, but they, they placed the, the, the finish, I think, just in front or just at the, at, uh, the, the Shisa sprint, which caused uh, the problems that the Shisa sprint couldn't count for, for, for FTS. Uh, and uh, yeah. I think... On, and a few weeks later, that that was in the D category, they had custom finish. I think they did uh, temples and towers, which finished for the Ds on top of the temple KOM. But there they put the uh, the banner. Well, it was f f uh, five or ten meters after it. It wasn't that big. So you, if you were in a sprint, uh, you still would be there, but still can can uh, if it's. Uh, if it's right after that, then uh, you don't have to sprint. Or and also with uh, also with uh, which I remember from uh, uh, James Bailey mentioning uh, with now with the with the steering. Uh, if it's if it's a custom finish based on uh, on distance, it can mess up uh, people because if you cut corners or something. The the distance is calculated on your on your rider, so you could yeah. your finish could, could be at a at a different point than a rider without steering or with steering who does, uh, hasn't steered that much. So can create some if you're in a group or in speed, create some some uh, some uh, some weird things. I haven't seen it before, but yeah, no, and that's I think you gotta got to avoid using custom finish until that gets fixed indeed all right that will bring us to the climbers gambit this week is epic reverse via 29 kilometers yeah, yeah. So, gambit yeah, uh, yeah this climb. is this is one the of the old... that that there are one of the uh climbs that doesn't have a nice short uh yeah. there are, is no course that gets you to that climb any quicker than this. Uh, there aren't really any any climbs or any any courses that do this this whole climb. So they just added the uh, mountain mash, but it it doesn't do the beginning. It, you don't go through the uh, the KOM start. So uh, this is one where get your warm up in on on the route because you've got plenty yeah. of time. Uh, <laughs> More than more than plenty of time. I think it's about twenty k, twenty twenty two k. It starts at twenty one point nine. Uh, yeah. and you've got six point three k to the top of the climb, and about another kilometer uh, afterward on that little downhill. Uh, or as as some of the uh, the guys on our ZRL team have uh, started naming it. Uh, the ride down to the uh, bike graveyard, uh, because every time this is this is the finish of a race, you just like everyone crests over the top, stops riding because they are so tired, and you just see like fifty people who have all just like stopped in the bottom of that little like valley. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's going to be a long one because twenty k. 
give or take like you do your warm up 30 30 ish k over your low that's like 40 minutes and then uh 20 20 yeah, depending on your category uh, uh, can be anywhere from i don't know how fast the eggs goes but i think c's probably mid-season that's mm, sub to around 30 ish minutes probably i don't know it's gonna be over an hour <laughs> for for the lower categories yeah yeah i think you're right it's uh Yeah, it, you do, you shouldn't need to warm up first. You should have space to warm up. Remember, it's only time to the segment, so you don't really need to be with a group. It doesn't matter. Draft is off. Yeah. So none of that matters. So fast fast Bs should be in the 20-minute range for the climb. Um, so Brent's done 1956. Chris, 2045. These were probably... Uh, let me look at the... Yeah, so... Uh, those were both in the ZRL on uh, on the Climber's Gambit course. Um, so probably, you know, faster than you would be able to do in uh, in in Climber's Gambit, in Herd Climber's Gambit. Um, yeah. But uh, so, you know, still somewhere in the low 20s. Uh, fast C is probably in that 20 two to 24 minute range. Um, fast A's are going to be in the kind of 16, 17 minute range, maybe. Um, and then D's 28, 30, I would say. Yeah, 30, 30 seems like a decent bet for uh, doing around two and a half. Yeah, looking at, because I... <laughs> I haven't really done a, a max effort out of, on Epic Air. I'm outside of the mountain bash route. But uh, yeah, my best was just uh, riding, doing uh, just, uh, I think it wasn't even in a workout about a month ago, 35 minutes, and that was at just 2.1 ish uh, watts per kilos. Uh, 35 minutes. Craig, I think you should ride this. It's a guaranteed PR for you. What? Uh, you, you, your fastest right. your fastest time on this is a 29.40. That's Craig, has never, Craig has never raced this uh this 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 climb. I don't, don't actually I have raced it either. Really? I have. That was a race. Oh, I'm okay. almost positive. Okay, so um, this was back totally when you were Utopia. slow. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just check. Uh, I am. I, I need to double check on this one, but I'm virtually certain that that was. Uh, Holt Route Watopia 2021. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. No, that was that was not. I thought we raced this in HSRL, but maybe not. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, three segments, maybe. We've def. Uh, I thought we'd done it in HWR, maybe, but. Yeah. Like an end, an end of your wait HWR or something, but. Anyway. I apparently did it in ZRL. In thirty-four minutes. That must have been. I was broken dead. Oh, I, Craig, I, I think that was the uh, that was maybe the one where you uh, you decided that you were going to attack early. <laughs> I think it was yes, uh, and then and, and then just give up and then collapse. <laughs> like like your your approach was, I'm going to make everyone else uh, disqualify themselves. You're right. That's that was what I did. Yeah, I went. Uh... <laughs> I, I went five minutes before the bottom of the climb to try and make everybody bust the 20 minutes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did it work? I don't think so, but it was fun. <laughs> they just waited till the climb and then caught you? I, I think so. A few guys did come with me. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Good. Well, 
second second last race of that particular series of climbers gambit so with the last one being the alp so you know get get your get your 20 ish minute climb in now before you've got your hour climb next week and i guess the only other thing to say about if it reverses it 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 is like rollier right there are a lot of spots on this course that go down right yeah yeah. really just two but yeah yeah. There are two downs and another two flats, two or yeah, three yeah. flats. And then the, the beginning has that long, you know, the bridge, uh, which is yeah. just a long like three percent. Uh so yeah, there are there I think the uh course that maybe is the most comparable is the Innsbruck reverse, uh yeah, except yeah. with uh, not the, the steeps yeah. are not as steep, and it doesn't. And Innsbruck doesn't have really a downhill because I remember yeah. the uh, that the downhill because uh, I was doing like the mountain bike the short route and it was with somebody with a hurt shirt, shirt on it and uh, I was in front of it on the when we crested one of the uh, just before we go into the downhill. I set a bit of a pace, but I didn't full send it. <laughs> he just passed me in a, in a, like a couple of seconds before him on the crest and uh, at the bound downhill. Yes, a couple of seconds in front of me. <laughs> me. So yeah, can be, but yeah, it's uh, it's climbers gambit. So it's just probably looking at yourself and you'll probably be spread out anyways uh, oh, too yeah. far with that, uh, that, that big, uh, big, big lead in. Uh, By the time you get to the start of the climb, people are going to be several minutes apart. Yeah. Well, and this is the race series that's for you. If you find yourself not being able to get to meetings on time, you can always just log in half an hour before. And then whenever you show up is your race. So. Yeah. Yep. Legit. All right, that will bring us to the Herd of Mountain Goats, which is La Reine this week. Oh. Which is, uh, La Reine is, well... It, it's, not, uh, it's not Ventop. <laughs> not Ventop. It's two-thirds of Ventop, yeah. It's two-thirds well, of Ventop. Not just two-thirds of Ventop, but apparently, I was just looking, it's, so it goes to the pans and you go through the intestines. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And up, then around up, up, the, the balloon Up the DKOM, and then... yeah. yeah. Take a left. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And then, yeah, then you do the first two thirds of Mama on two to the chalet. So I, I still do not have this route badge. So it is possible. <laughs> Nor do I. It is possible that I jump into this and ride it super easy, potentially still win because I might be the only person that shows up. Yep. You say super easy. I mean, it'll just take you so long because that climb is just for. Oh yeah, you know, I've got a I've got a endurance ride planned on Sunday. I can go out and ride it two watts a kilo for three hours. Yep. Well, have fun. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what. I, I guess I'd say what. What are the tips? Bring a climbing bike. Don't yeah. go hard until at least the start of Petit KOM. And frankly. I would not even go that hard. Like no. maybe threshold, probably ninety percent of threshold, maybe. And then, and then, don't really worry till you get to about kilometer twelve, I think, because there's kind of like even then there's a little flatter bit that starts, and then it you, yeah. you kind of make a turn and the climb starts in earnest. Then yeah. you should probably start finding your whatever. Uh, whatever it's going to take you from there to the top, that much power, and just go with that much power till you get to the end. <laughs> but I mean, really, it's a, this is a lot like racing road to sky. It's a little bit, it's a little bit different, but you know, going through Lee's intestine a lot like going through the jungle. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, you know, you've got ups and downs. You don't have the downhill, but you're not on dirt. Not that dirt's as slow as it was anymore. And yeah, I think you're right though, doing from the from the base of the Petit KOM, like if you're doing 3.2, it probably takes you about an hour to get to the end from there. Yep. Yeah, and I think it's also a nicer 
because I remember the Petit Kewam is a nice warm up uh, part of the climb, but because it, it's not very steep, I remember if you do the actual van top, it's it's steep right away. There are some flatter sections in it, but you can use Petit Kewam to find your climbing rhythm, and then uh, once you're on top of uh, Petit Kewam, uh, the the higher percentage it starts, so you would have your whatever your five to six minutes effort uh, uh, on Petit KOM as a warm up to get in your climbing rhythm. Yeah, the, st the, the stats on the route are twenty two point eight kilometers at four point nine percent, and 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 the first and the, eight k are flat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so be patient. I can yeah. tell you, I have burned out on, on one, two, you know, about halfway up several times. So it uh, it rewards those who are best understanding of their limitations and, and timing. <laughs> yeah, I haven't also done either of the of the two, uh, Ventop or Ryan. Uh, it's probably going to be on a rainy day when I have to still do uh, want to do, still do some uh, some uh, longer rides at endurance uh, pace but yeah good it's the it's the last one in that particular series of mountain goats so that's yeah. all right yeah. and it's gonna be a quite a while because I know uh, that we can talk about it next week or whenever it is uh, but i think uh, matt wants to do uh, gonna do his uh, master racing uh, new series yep yeah it might be a break on mountain goats raw well. good that will bring us to the stampede which is going to be one lap of lagardia loop which is it's around 5k it's not quite exactly 5k i think it's like four point seven nine or something like that but there's a there's a you start at the new york pens and then it's a 1.7 kilometer lead in up to the sprint and then that's the start of the route officially and you do just that one little bottom lap around yeah. through the new york section and then back to the sprint loop and that's the race so should be it's relatively flat like there is it's like all new york stuff it's a little bit rollier than flat but um yeah. And it's the counterclockwise version where you go down into the sprint with that little kicker and down down to the sprint or the finish banner. Yeah, it's it's rolly. But that that one little four to five percent kicker is the that's the steepest little that's the steepest segment in the whole route. Yeah. Yeah. So you should you know it's five it's five K, so I would think you'll get close. Bees can probably average like 44 kph, maybe as much as I think, maybe 45 if you're even bigger. Um, so it's going to go by in about like a minute 32 a kilometer, a minute 36 a kilometer, something like that. Yeah, you know, I would say something under eight minutes for even even the C's and D's. Uh, you know, is yep. reasonable. Yeah. So um, six six for A's. Could happen. Yeah. For sure. So um, you know, we're we're mixing up the distances, mixing up stuff. There's a little bit of tactics that go in hard on the little bit rolly bits, but really it's gonna be all about how much, especially once you get to past that five minute mark, you can just keep turning the wheels over. <laughs> Have you been uh racing these, Brent? I did one last week. I did the I did the eleven London loop. Uh yeah. Greater London or, flat. Greater London flat, sorry, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, I did it last week. I am I am off form on my TTs, I will tell you that right now. I got two ninety nine, two hundred and ninety nine watts is my average on that one for twenty it was seventeen K. So took me twenty four oh, ish bad. minutes. No, that's not that bad. My my PB is up in the two thirties, so you know or three thirties, pardon me. Yeah. For that time so you know I'm, I'm just off like i just haven't done tts for three months <laughs> yeah so we'll get back into her here hopefully i've got more time on sundays potentially we'll see 
we'll see what the world holds. But so you're planning on doing this weekend or Monday? I'm hoping to. Monday. I'm hoping um, to get it in Sunday morning, hopefully. Yeah, attendance is pretty good at Stampede. So uh, fastest TT bike, fastest wheels, most aero wheels, most aero TT. Um, and yeah. Go this fast. Is our, this is the second shortest route in the, there are, though, I guess the third shortest. We have a 3K one somewhere in there too, I think. Yeah, that one will be fun. Fan flats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not as fun as Bell Lap, but. Yeah, it's it says on the route list four point three kilometers, but I'm pretty sure it's long. It's gonna be closer to five. Uh, maybe not quite. Anyway, we count it. it. It's between four point three and five. Let's put it that way. It'll be under five. So, you know, when we're talking about this timing. Know that it's supposed to be the five in the sequence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, that will bring us to the bullseye this week is Volcano Volcano Circuit, circuit Counterclockwise. One of the so, one of the classic bullseye courses. One of the classics, and it runs so this one runs the same way as it always did. So the lead in doesn't count. It's the end of each lap. And that's it. And it's the uh two stared uh finish this direction. Yes. So yep. you've got that little punch up into the volcano and then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a couple hundred meters of flat in the volcano yeah. before another little kick to the finish. Yeah. And it's hard to completely win it on the first step, but you've got to go hard enough to not get dropped is pretty much the, the, the way to go here. And yeah, I mean, these, these get hard. Yeah, I've definitely lost it there uh, yep. several times by not going hard enough to stick with the people who were fully sending it there. But then you can get dropped by going too hard and getting dropped through the actual banner. Yeah. So, no, it's a, it, it's a fun little course. I think for Bullseye, I probably prefer the other direction. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, 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 it's a good route. They both work. They're very. They're they actually race very differently for bullseye. Yes, I think that's right. This the sprint finish is this is a longer finish than the other one. The other one is almost you got to be a little more patient and wait. Yeah, yeah, it is. You wait and wait and wait. And like I, I need to go. And, so it's yeah. six laps. Uh, this, yeah, this is a this will be a fun one. Yeah. So it's five five. The so the first time through the banner doesn't count. Then. The next five are 50 points each and then double points at the finish. And can you see people outside your category? Are you racing? Yes, you can. With them? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so it's the same as HSRL with the five-minute gap. So okay. the faster categories may or may not come through. Depends on how they're I'll racing it. Between just attendance and the way the race shakes out, I find the A's don't tend to come through the C's very often, but the B's sometimes do. Yeah, depending how long those laps and stuff are, it's pretty. Yeah, fun. that's I think the the yeah. bigger thing is like okay, that's generally true, but it's a ten minute ten minute gap, and these yep. are these are a seven something minute lap for the for the C's, yep. like yep. yeah, yeah. But the C's almost always catch the D's because usually yeah. the C's are the biggest group. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. Yep. Yep. Although from one from what I've seen, because uh, one of my teammates Ernst is uh, has been doing these, and it last couple of two weeks uh, attendance was pretty low in uh, in the EU slots. The uh, about yeah, five minutes for uh, it's gonna be seven UK time. That's uh, I think race yeah. four. It's been it's, uh, race, five... it's race number two. Yeah. yeah. So actually, the worst 
the worst slot was slot four this past week. Um, so I actually don't know if there was some sort of glitch in Zwift at the time because every rider dropped out within a ver what appeared to be a very short period of time based on what I could see in Zwift power. But uh, every rider dropped out. So hmm. there were no finishers. Wow. That's but, yeah. uh, but it, it, it has some fun tactics because uh, seeing it uh, on his, uh, on the Zwift power, because Ernst was a DD, he was yeah. like at the first sprint, uh, right uh, after you do the downhill through the, which was on Coast Crusher last week, yet like, Almost minute forty-five down on one, on the one uh, on uh, the the leader in in uh, the D category, and he won the race by over six minutes. I think he yeah. caught caught him because Ernst is. Yeah, he showed it today in our ladder race. He can get dropped pretty easily, but he has consistent power, and uh, at some point, I think the. The the seas caught him and he was able to 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 tag along with a couple of them. Probably that's the reason why the um, that other rider probably blew up and lost like six minutes on him. So yep. Yep. Anyway, so yeah. Anyone with any ideas on revitalizing bullseye? Um, I did have somebody suggest moving the time of race one a little bit later, so make it. I think 7.30 p.m. East Australian, which makes it 5.30 in the morning East Coast Americas. So that might yeah. help that slot. But anyway, I don't know what to do about the uh, race, about the race four. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Race, two, race two is at uh, almost peak, peak EU time, at least for UK, it's 7. 7 p.m. is like. Yeah, we can do a little bit of timing. I, I mean, I think the other thing that I know, I don't want to, like, I think it's intimidating to a lot of people when you do the ones like Coast Crusher that are like nine sprints. Like, I think we got to stick yeah. to like yeah. the kind of one sprint yeah. per lap and the lap is something like three to six kilometers long. <laughs> like, well, that, that was actually, are... that was actually one of my thoughts is to kind of go back to the, Go back to the the original bullseye format. Uh, have it, you know, yeah, multiple laps, uh, you know, kind of crit style, with, yeah. and uh, yeah, probably reduce the number of courses. Maybe make it a little less interesting for the people that have done it for a long time, but kind of have a real definable theme on it too. Yeah, I mean the other. I mean, what I think the other thing is is if we pause some other races and stick it into the weekend and then take some breaks on stuff. Like that's the other longer yeah, term solution but... on stuff is. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I like having one series midweek too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's worth tr trying to come yeah. up with a format that'll work midweek. Uh, I, Cause I think the other part, I mean, it's not an issue at this particular moment in time, but of course, you know, a lot of people still do Thursday TTT. And then when you've yep. got, there's a lot of different series that run on Tuesdays. And so, yep you know having someone go to all right you're gonna do a, a nine sprints and 30 minute race on a wednesday like there's just yeah. a lot of people that are like i'm not i have other things i'm doing that aren't that yeah so yeah that was probably a little ambitious i wanted to try it i hadn't yeah. actually raced that course until after i scheduled it so <laughs> lots of other people honest, it's yeah. not the first time it's not the first one so there's no i don't yeah. you know it's there's nothing wrong with the idea i mean we've no, done no. crazier stuff before but in terms of like what might attract more people to it, I suspect if yeah. someone looks at that description, they're like, I'm not. Yeah. I, I mean, I do think that, uh, and we've, we've all talked about this, but kind of putting bullseye climbers, gambit stampede on a like rotating schedule and just hopefully mm -hmm. getting a yeah. bigger turnout for all of them. Uh, but like, you know, this month we're doing Stampede, this month it's Climber's Gambit, this month it's Bullseye, uh, might actually get people yeah. more excited about the the variety of, you know, this is the thing that we do this month. Yeah. yeah. I, I, yes. We just need, yeah. 
<laughs> I think there's some some merit to that suggestion. Good. All right. That is the week of herd racing. That brings us to round the horn. Sean, why don't you introduce round the horn for the week? Yeah. So uh, a few weeks ago, I was riding around uh, and somebody just, you know, in, in maybe it was, it was with the like Miguel group were just riding around and somebody was like, who else has like 20 million drops? Uh, and actually several people in that group were just like, you know, I have more drops than I will ever use. They like, I think that for many of us and probably actually for most of us on this podcast, uh, we get to a point where the drops don't actually mean anything to us anymore. Uh, I I personally have, I think, 23 million drops and haven't bought anything in 20 levels, 30 levels, maybe even 40 levels at this point. Like it was the, the Kdex wheels or yeah, the maybe not the Kdex wheels. I think it's the Kdex. Uh, anyway, uh, the wheels and level forty two. Yeah, the 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 wheels and the uh, the fastest TT bike were the last things that I bought. But you get to a point where your your garage is so cluttered that you know any other just fun like I might oh I might I might get that bike. It looks cool. Uh, aren't really things that you want to buy because then you just you have a harder time finding the things that you actually want to ride. Um, so I, I was just interested in thoughts on, okay, they've, they've introduced this virtual currency and then don't give you anything to spend it on. What would you like to be able to spend your virtual currency on? Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, Craig, give her. Suggestion number one, custom paint on bikes. That was a hundred percent going to be my number one suggestion too. Okay, and, and like even like it, or yeah. like um like c- c- custom colors on Tron. Like there's now like a gold Tron. Like give us a mm. I don't know a, a white Tron or something that you can only get with 1.5 million drops. Some that people show off with, right? But for sure, like uh, you know the uh, the UCI Championship bike colors on the Trekamonda or whatever, and it costs five million drops. Like whatever, like hundred percent. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is definitely a thing in many other uh, types of games uh, where, so this was my number one uh, suggestion as well. It wasn't bike, but, uh, but jerseys Um, like being able to design like, okay. So they have a little creator app that lets you design a bike uh, or Jersey and, you don't get to use it unless you pay for it with your drops. Uh, but des- yeah, being able to design a little, uh, design the bike and, and jersey of your choosing, and maybe they have to uh, implement some sort of automatic filtering so that people aren't uh, inappropriate with with their uh, jerseys and uh, bikes. But that's my number one as well. So well, right a lot now, of would... video, a lot of video games where they have a currency, it's because something's wearing out or like it only it's time limited, right? Like your weapon eventually breaks yeah. or you run out of bullets or whatever it is. And in Zwift, everything just persists, which I think does nothing but annoys most of us. Oh, so if that's... anything, they should say, oh, you're rot. You're you know, you got the you got the new Kdex. It's only good for 10,000 kilometers. Or, and this is this is along those same lines. Uh, so I don't know if I don't know if I like this, but it is along those lines where it's like, okay, I buy race tires. I buy some race tires. Those are the ones that actually roll fast and they have they they have a drop off in how how long yeah. they last at a certain uh, rolling resistance and the rolling resistance gets worse over time. Uh, and yeah, you like, okay, well, I only use these ones for races and I've got the, and I swap them out and, you know, like you would in real life, you've got your, 
your fast tires and your training tires. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you could have like another power up that you go through that's an, actually a negative power up, like it's a mechanical. And then you can have the choice of like, just, all right, I got to spend my drops to replace my derailleur. <laughs> or I have to ride in one year for the rest of the race. I would think. Yeah. That way. <laughs> yeah. You could do that. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> if everyone is on plays or something, they could totally enforce that, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Plays or clicks. I guess like, if you're doing custom stuff, how do you use it as currency? Like you just you get like for a million drops, you get to make one custom outfit or bike yeah. paint job or whatever. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so I had two others. So um, I, I'll use one. So that was uh, fancy costumes or skins. So it's like, you know, ride right around as Jervis or something. <laughs> yeah, a la Warcraft. Yeah. yeah. The, only, the only thing I'll say about the custom skins idea or, or jerseys or whatever the trick is, is I'm prepared yeah. to accept the limitation that drops are for buying equipment and Fair. and leveling up and other sort of you know participation in particular events gets you cosmetics i'm prepared to accept that dichotomy about what things will do what but you know there's no reason it has to be that way other than well, you know swapping three lines of code probably yeah i well, mean the, the difficulty of that really is that okay so then give us something to spend it on uh, yeah. give us equipment that makes it more interesting. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I, at this point, there really aren't pieces of equipment that I want to spend those drops on. So I mean, uh, pedals, we, none of us have pedals somehow. Well, but... well just the whole, the whole, to, to tag <laughs> on to both the idea that you and Sean had, John, I just say like custom parts, all, all the custom parts, like just, you yep. come up with a whole garage that's all like tires, wheels, pedals, seats. Does it whatever. do anything? I guess that's yeah. Well, I, I... you'd have to you have to be a bit careful about that, but you know you could even have it do nothing and just just be for looks, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I know that means I gotta like model all these different things together or whatever, but like it can't like no. I don't know. I don't I don't like to judge people's jobs or but it can't be that hard like like every other video game kind of does it yeah. yeah i was about to say that you you got the the drops basically because uh in other types of games a lot of these uh like store bought or which you pay with real money or in this case maybe with your drops uh is is, is usually cosmetic items and and they yeah. sell a lot. Like, for instance, I played WoW back in the day, uh, 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 and one of their they have a subscription, but they make a, just a load of money with cosmetics, uh, server transfers, whatever, for just micro. I wouldn't call them really micro transactions at this point if you're paying like. Fifteen dollars, but yeah, people think, will pay for it. And I think we should just pause for a moment and say, "Welcome to no, no, right on time." No, no, I think we gotta. You can come in on this, Steve. You can come in. So the question is, is, is what do you want to spend your drops on? So Steve Richard is joining us. He's decided to drop in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just decided to listen because he broke some part of his computer and he can't unmute. <laughs> all right. All right. So, all right, we'll carry on. We'll carry on. So, yeah, I mean, I, I guess the only thing I could maybe say is I think given the recent, like, listen, I, I agree with you, Steph, like every other digital media property in the world that has interactive stuff makes money off selling in-game. Stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, I yeah, wouldn't do it. Uh, seeing uh, the discussion we had last week with uh, how people are up in arms about a five, uh, five, uh, whatever currency up subscription upgrade, but if it yeah. goes, to, if it goes to your drops, which you basically do, you have to work for to get the, the drop. So yeah, then it would make sense. And I mean, 
I, I do think that that's one of those things where if people were very interested in the types of things that you could buy with drops, well, you the drops then end up getting depleted and hey, maybe you act, maybe they can make money by actually selling drops. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, I did have one other thing, or yeah, two, yeah. two other things, but one sort of covered as far as other things to spend our drops on. What else you got? Give her. Different color fire socks. <laughs> Pink flames. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so I had an idea that I think was teased when uh, Zwift at least when I first started Zwift, they had the radio tower. And once you got near the radio tower, you could sort of hear the broadcast. And I yep. feel like they, they need like a real broadcast and you could use your drops to actually program for programming. Like you could choose the songs that were going to be broadcast <laughs> or, or the pink Tron could be broadcast on it. Just saying. Right. We could have a reg regular Saturday spot at like eight o'clock North American time or something. Could um, they spend their drops to turn us off. Yeah. <laughs> and it, right. People, half the people, I mean, I have my uh, game sounds turned off, but if there was something that was like, you know, it might be interesting. I mean, everybody has their own weird musical tastes, but I, I think it'd be kind of cool. And maybe. That's too much, uh, like, especially if people were talking, then you got to, somebody's got to monitor it to make sure it's appropriate. But, um, fuck that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know, if, ribbon. Any, I, I don't know I if any of you play Fallout. Isn't there a radio tower in that that only plays fiddle music? Um, Is it? Okay. Sure. <laughs> sure. We could have something like that. The, the, the fiddle music gets progressively louder as you do Epic Com. Yeah. Yeah, but if you wanted, you could like you could pay a lot of money and you could have the Tom Jones hour, right? And you could yeah. just well, really well, annoy well. people and they do want people to keep playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean John John before this actually before we started mentioned that he, he might want to do essentially psychological warfare on people. So. Well, it's sort of like the burrito. I, I started thinking about that, that like I could use my thing, my drops to broadcast music to other people for a race or a sprint or some event so that they would be annoyed and uh, wouldn't want to race. But that's not that's not as like inclusive. Like if we had a, a radio show and I could I could program 20 minutes of a radio show with songs that I think are funny, all weird Al Yankovic or something. Um, maybe people would start like engaging with that. And then when like the herd has, you know, kick it up Tuesday, like we could pool our resources and we could all play, I don't know, country music or something crazy. I've got a couple other ones too. One is, um, paying for like different congratulations and games outside of the ride-ons like maybe you wanted to say someone to say moo right you want to give you someone a moo and it like showed up in their little speech bubble or whatever mm -hmm. i don't know maybe they got a cow spot or something but it costed you like a thousand drops every time you send one mm -hmm. i could see that would be something I, I think that'd be kind of fun you know something that's repeatable and easy and fun yep. so this is an another idea that i you know, Swift doesn't seem to uh, be focusing a lot of their effort on making life more interesting for racing. Uh, so, you know, who knows? But uh, I, I would I would pay drops for and, and potentially a decent amount of drops for specific races to be able to have a second power up slot. Oh. Oh, that that's a pretty big advantage. Uh, it doesn't mean that you get to use two at once. You still have to pick which thing you're deploying, but being able to save one basically you get you get that only means that you get one extra power up over the course of the race. But being able to say like 
you then get to like you go through things and maybe you have a better chance of having the power up that works for the segments that are coming up well, and i yeah for the race like five being able to go uh yeah being able to go uh draft truck and then arrow at the end of a sprint at, at a on a sprint finish is a pretty huge <laughs> like like ghost like ghost make yeah. it so that you can't you can't do two within a certain amount of time yeah you know that you you still only have to use one thing at the finish, uh, yeah. But I I don't know that that seems like something where I would be I would spend I would spend drops on that for like okay it's you know maybe I only do it for ZRL or or races that are important depending on you know is it well, is I, it a two million drop thing? I suspect something that would only be implemented in like the herd monthly race series, like something like ZRL, they probably wouldn't put it in because it, they're trying to drive teams and all that. But I could easily see in like the bag of badge series for the month or whatever that, okay. And this week is part yeah. of bag of badge. We're going to have, you can acquire a second power up slot with a million drops a race. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I could, that works. The, the other one in racing that I was going to go with is, is entry fees. Like you want to get in these races, you got to spend drops. So you can't do all these unless you've sort of accumulated a certain number of drops just to like, I mean, you don't, I mean, in video games all the time, right? There's like kind of level gates and experience gates and stuff like that. So effectively it's like, I know it's a, and or you got to do so many other workouts or rides or whatever else to accumulate them, but it would drive people into the rest of those other things that aren't races, right? It would drive people into workouts and, and group rides. I guess you yeah. Are, races too but you know what i mean it would it would be a way yep. like if you want to participate in this race series you're gonna have to earn four million drops otherwise and that's going to drive people to engage with the thing and it keeps so it like it'll keep out the i mean who knows many people will just come with bots that turn their thing to gather up the drops to do it but you know it'd keep yeah. out some of the like z-powered nonsense that people just show up and blast into a race too Yeah, I mean, you, you're you never going to be able to do anything about the people that are the trying to break things on, yeah, trying to break things on purpose. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that would, you know, keep the people who it's their first day, they show up to a race and then ride at 400 watts for the entire race. Yep, exactly. Well, there you go. That's a free uh, consultation for you, Zwift. All right, Steve, we gotta go. We gotta at least we at least gotta get you in for what are you drinking? <laughs> I've just had a cup of tea, um, mainly because I missed the start of the John uh, busy week of work and just fell asleep on the sofa. Um, <laughs> the dog has not decided not to even shift and wake oh, up in a good bit of video call or podcast action there for everyone. Yeah, that's good. That's that's perfect pink Tron action, honestly. <laughs> Well, that's good. I think those are good ideas. And, uh, you know, um, if you work for Zwift and you listen to this, James Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> There's some Probably the ideas. only person. Yeah, I'm sure that's that. accurate. I'm sure that's accurate, actually. But, uh, you know, maybe someone else will listen to this and they'll put it in the comments. I say that was a good idea and we'll get some positive momentum. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, but I, yeah, your the drop system could definitely use some other options, a hundred percent. So, I think on that note, we'll we'll say thank you to Sean Fogenberg, thank you to John Keenan, thank you to Craig Martin, thank you to Steph Jen, thank you to Steve Pritchard for coming in, and thank you to Steve's dog for having a nap. And we will say thank you to everyone at home for listening. Thank you to everyone who's doing herd races. We'll see you out there racing. Moo and good night. Yeah.